Hi, this is Andrew Moore Crispin for Gadget TV on Butterscotch.com, and today we're taking a look at the Nokia N900 smartphone. They call it a mobile computer, so let's have a look and see if it's going to live up to its own hype. So first things first, here's the power button. We'll power it on so you can get an idea of how long it takes to, uh, to fully boot up. On the side here we have a camera button as well as a volume up and down rocker. Now you can see the sliding screen that we had open at the, off the top of the chute. So you can see here a full three-line QWERTY keyboard. On this side of the device, we have a lock switch and a four-stage uh, microphone jack. This can also be used to plug in an included AV cable. We have a speaker grill down this side for speakerphone, as well as a stylus, which indicates that this is not a capacitive touchscreen. It's actually a resistive touchscreen. So I think we should be up and running now. Almost. There we go. Now, if we look on the other side of the device, we see another speaker grill, as well as a micro-B USB port. On the back, we have a 5-megapixel Carl Zeiss lens with dual LED flash, as well as a feature that we uh, quite like. It's this little kickstand here that lets us uh, set the device down on our desk or watch, uh, watch for example, a movie when we're, when we're flying. So let's have a quick look at the heart or the software running on this thing. So first off, we can see here, it is, uh, it is kind of a unique operating system. This is called MIMO. It's a, it's a Linux-based operating system. Now you can see here, it does kind of borrow a little bit from Android. It feels a little bit the same. Uh, you can see across the bottom here, we have access to um, some of our most often used um, shortcuts. So we have here OV Maps, the OV Store, uh, pictures, email, those kinds of things. And we can slide between the screens like this. Now, very similar to Android, if we were to hold onto the screen for a second, you see here that we get what's called a desktop menu. So now we, get add, we can go in and actually add widgets, add shortcuts, add a contact to our, uh, to our home screen. And any time we're in this, this kind of a menu, you just have to tap anywhere on the screen to exit. So if, for example, we were to go into the more detailed applications view, let's say we want to go into see more here. And here you can see some of the applications that we've installed. Now one interesting thing, you see here, um, somewhere around here, we have uh, an SNES emulator and an NES emulator. This is not something you traditionally find on a mobile phone platform, and this really goes to the fact that the, uh, the, the MIMO operating system is completely open source. So it's a bit of a Wild West kind of scenario. You can find um, pretty much everything that you could possibly think of. Obviously, a lot of the stuff is not quite as polished as you might see on, on for example, an iPhone or even on an Android phone, um, but it's good that it's there. Um, and you can pretty much find an application to do the things that you want to do most. Here we have a Facebook application, uh, Internet or Instant Messenger, as well as a bunch of games, as well as some silly things like this, which is uh, kind of a, a toy that we probably all tried when we were a kid. It uses the accelerometer and basically moves when you, so let's see, we'll choose baby goat. Now if we tilt it, well, it should be bong. A again, like I say, sometimes um, they, the apps kind of lack a bit of polish. But anytime we're in any application, we can go to a previous screen by tapping here, or we can tap here and go to a view of all the applications that we have running. Currently, we only have one. Or we can tap again to go back to a main application screen and kind of drill down to what we want to do here. Let's take a quick look at the phone application. Now, here you can see we're in a uh, recently dialed calls. There's also the dialing pad that you, you'll use here. Now, like I said, it is a resistive touch screen, which is where the stylus comes in. But any time a button is, is uh, you know, big like this one, you can actually type in a number, and it's pretty easy. Now let's go through some of the tech specs on this device. It has 32 gigabytes of internal memory, a 600 megahertz processor. We've seen faster processors, but as you see, it's, uh, it's pretty responsive. 256 megabytes of RAM built in, as well as 768 megabytes of virtual memory. So that's basically system uh, storage that's being um, used as RAM. So that's up to a gig of app, what they call application memory. Now we really like the 5 megapixel camera on the back, and we like the fact that we can record video in uh, 800 by 480 um, resolution. Now it also has assisted GPS on board, so if we go into the Maps application, we'll have a quick look at that. That's one that Nokia is really pushing pretty hard these days, their OV Map solution. Now, it, like I said, it does lack some of the polish. Oh, as it stands right now, we're actually not on the Wi-Fi network. So we're going to cut here and come back after we've input this web code. And we're back, and now we have an internet connection, and we've downloaded a little bit of a map of a local area here. So now we can see here, like I said, the, the um, interface is not quite as elegant as we might be used to on, say, an iPhone. The real attraction here is that a lot of this stuff is, uh, is completely open source. So you can see here we can have a typical map view, which is what we have now. We can have a satellite view. 
takes a little while to uh, populate on a slow network. But we can also have a terrain view. You can see it coming up there. And we can also switch between night mode, and we can also view 3D landmarks. Now, down here, we can actually choose where we want to navigate to. So we can use routing. Um, we, there's a directions option here, which you actually have to have some data input, some um, directional data input. Or we can just search for a place like this. Now, this is obviously where we want to be using the, um, the keyboard. Now, you've probably noticed that it is a little awkward trying to, trying to manipulate the screen with the stylus. Like I say, a lot of the stuff you can actually just do with your, with your finger or your thumb or your fingernail. Um, but if you re need to kind of get really precise and, and tap on a very specific thing, then you kind of do need to use the stylus. A prime, a prime example of that is in, in this view here, where if we want to close an application, Tapping on this X with our fingernail is actually possible, but it's much easier if we just kind of tap it with the stylus here. So that's a quick look at the Nokia N900. For Gadget TV, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. For more sweet stuff, visit butterscotch.com.